Hey, what's up? Wait for some more people to type in. How's everybody doing? I see the waves. What's up? What's up? Yeah, so we basically just waiting for Eve to tap in with us. Um, then, yeah, get the conversation going. Uh, it's my first time doing our Finish Line Women, so I'll reintroduce myself. My name is Omar. I'm the senior cultural partnership strategist for Finish Line. So, yeah, I'm really excited to, you know, put this together and really, you know, create some great dialogue and conversation to help educate the communities that, you know, we have our stores set up in on, you know, different issues that the community is going through. So, I appreciate all the waves. Cool, cool. So as we wait for her, you know, with new sneakers I've been getting. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. Hi. Hey, what up, Eve? Can you see me okay? Yeah, everything's good. You can hear me? I know yeah, last time I had some feedback. So... Here, I'm gonna actually fix this a little because it's ooh, close. Okay, there we go. Cool, cool. So I appreciate you taking the time out, you know, speak with a uh, finish line about allyship. So that's where the, you know, the conversation is gonna start. Just to recap, last week on Juneteenth, we started the series with Terrence J, and we talked about the importance of Juneteenth. So, and it has, you know, it's been getting great feedback. So now we have you coming in and talking about allyship. And, you know, I mentioned earlier about us, you know, trying our best to serve the communities and elevate, you know, the black voice. So, you know, someone like yourself we work with who is not only into sneakers, but into, you know, using your voice to help elevate others. We thought that you'd be great to participate in this. So thank you again. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. This is obviously a very conversation, um, a very important conversation that needs to be had. And I'm happy to lend you know, a voice to it, so. Yeah, of course, so let's get right into it. So how will you describe allyship to, you know, the people who are on, on this live right now and the importance of it? Well, honestly, allyship is action. And so in mm -hmm. order to actually be an ally, you have to be actively allying for something. And so in this case in particular, it's about, you know, the greater movement that's happening of Black Lives Matter and decolonizing our thoughts and what we thought we knew to be the truth. And that really starts within ourselves. And, you know, everyone has some sort of semblance of privilege. Like right. I, the fact that I'm sitting here and I have visibility is a privilege that other, you know, black brothers and sisters that I have don't have just by being a little bit darker skinned or by being, um, you know, not necessarily seen or palatable in the like bigger conversation as it pertains to your proximity to whiteness. So we yeah. all have that. We all have to acknowledge it. And we all have to be accountable for it. And it's not, you know, this like scary word to be like privilege because everyone has it to some degree. So, mm -hmm. I think just starting there, you know, don't feel guilty, don't feel ashamed that maybe for the first time in your life, you're learning that your privilege based on the color of your skin, your appearance has helped you in some way, shape or form in your lifetime. Instead, use that to fuel, you know, the work that you do and use that privilege for good to help others. And that, again, starts with your own education. It's like seek the truth for yourself, educate yourself on how we've gotten to this point and how you got to this point, and then start to deconstruct and see how you can help the greater movement at hand. Yeah, for sure. And I've known, like I've seen on Instagram, like when people say it's not enough to be like not racist, you have to be actively anti-racist. So I think that's part of like the allyship conversation as well. So then, Absolutely. you know, from your experience, like how do people become stronger allies when it comes to, you know, the black community? Well, 
honestly, there's so many different ways to do it because again, at the core of it, it all starts within yourself as an individual. So mm -hmm. let's, you know, take for example, if you are starting this path um, and say you're just waking up to your own privilege for the first time in your life. And so you start by speaking out on social media and telling people this is wrong. You start sharing these, you know, infographics that are coming about. That's one way to do it. Um, then there's also the conversations that need to be had with family members who may still uh, have racist ideas and thoughts and those need to be deconstructed. You know, it's about not having fear when it comes to talking about these like uncomfortable things because right. at the end of the day, you know, the oppression of black people in this country, it's, it's been centuries, it's been over 400 years of uncomfortableness for us that we felt in our lifetimes, that the generations before us felt in their lifetimes. And so it's inherently uncomfortable and you just have to get over that crutch. It's never going to feel comfortable, but you have to keep going. So once you start that within yourself, whether it is starting with social media, whether it is starting to talk to your family and you know, tearing away at those layers and, and getting down to it, then you can do it in bigger ways and talk right. about it at work and advocate for, you know, maybe your black teammates who are having a hard time because they are experiencing some sort of oppression or um, discrimination that kind of stems from this umbrella of white supremacy. There are so many different ways to do it really, but it just has to be done on every layer. Even the smallest thing of just sharing and talking about it and keeping your foot on the gas, you have to do your part if you want to be an actual ally in this. So. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, those con those uncomfortable conversations are the ones that need to be had. You know, like imagine you feeling uncomfortable ha about having the conversation. Well, you know, it's pretty uncomfortable having to live it as well. So I think once people get past that, uh, the how uncomfortable they are when it comes to those conversations, then, you know, it gets exactly. a little easier to, you know, understand and show some empathy when it comes to those things. Yes, you have to embrace that discomfort because you're you're relearning everything. You know what I mean? Like, especially if this is just your, fir your first awakening to the reality that other people um, that you consider to be friends or family or mm -hmm. teammates or whatever it is have been experiencing this and you had no idea, like use that fuel to champion and help them you know it can even be in the form of like giving up a space for them i think even in within the larger like instagram influencer community um you know there have been non-black influencers who have spoken out and said i'm not accepting any more opportunities from this brand because they haven't taken a hard enough stance on what's going on and i stand with you know my black friends family whatever it may be and I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep going and doing that, knowing that it's wrong. So there's, mm -hmm. it's really been like amazing to see people really speak up about it. And I think it's just like looking at those examples, learning from those examples and continuing to talk about it because that's when you start to break down that like fear in it and there shouldn't be any yeah. fear in it. And then how do you feel about like, you know, the brands taking a part in allyship, whether it's like a monetary donation or just like spreading information. Because I can imagine like maybe for some brands, it might be a big leap to be able to, you know, talk so eloquently about what's going on, so. Yeah, well, when it comes to brands, I mean, they have just as big of a responsibility as anyone. You know, something that I had created earlier in just like a separate video was talking specifically about just like all this new support that black creatives are now receiving as a result of being seen by like mm -hmm. everyone kind of for the first time. And, you know, a lot of the brands that are speaking out in support or creating a t-shirt in support for whatever it may be, it's like internally, they may still be perpetuating these things that they're speaking out about. So yeah. that internal dialogue, that um, unpacking has to start within on every single level, on the individual mm -hmm. level. And if we're talking about on 
a brand level, you know, in your corporate office, look at your structure. How many black people are actually employed? What positions do they hold? Are there any black people in leadership? Especially when it comes to sneaker culture, you know, sneaker culture is an extension of black culture. And a lot of the people who are working in sneaker culture are not black. That mm -hmm. is inherently, you know, an issue that is now coming to more light with everything that's going on. And it's just like, it has to be authentic. And there's that difference between authentic allyship and performative allyship. And authentic yeah. allyship is when you're actually diving deep to the core of what it is and taking accountability. And like, I wish I had like a little magic marker that I could write like accountability because mm -hmm. that is the biggest like buzzword of this all. You have to be willing to take accountability for what you didn't know before, for what you perpetuated before in right. order to move on and to build and to actually support the communities that you're trying to support. Yeah, so. definitely gotta be able to, you know, put your money where your mouth is and actually apply exactly. the things that you're, you're preaching, so. And yes, then, uh, cause like the t-shirts mm -hmm. are nice, but at the end of the day, you know, capitalism itself upholds these structures of white supremacy. So yeah. selling a t-shirt that benefits black culture is still playing into this game. And we have obviously way bigger um, issues that we need to just dismantle. And while a one-time big donation is nice, it's about mm -hmm. continuing that work. It's about being consistent and actually, you know, if you're a brand, making sure that your brand is a place that is safe and equitable for black people. So mm -hmm. it's very nuanced, but again, if you are doing that, that work to get to the root of it, whether you're an individual or a brand, then you are really mm -hmm. doing that work of authentic allyship. And that's what we need more of. And then what brands do you think are doing that right? Um, that is a great question. But I've, I've seen a few different like messages and things that really stuck out to me, like Reebok, uh, you know, came out when all of the sneaker brands were kind of doing their circuit and they were like, our brand wouldn't exist without black culture. And that mm -hmm. I think was a very bold statement from the sense that some of these brands are still afraid to even say black in their statements. And they're mm -hmm. over here saying that like, yes, we are here because the black community has supported us and this is how we've been able to get this far. And that is the case for a lot of these brands who are built off of black culture. And so that right. needs to be way more commonplace. And I think, you know, brands like Ben and Jerry's who have been going in for a while, um, sure. you know, they're a great case study because they're selling ice cream, but they're also talking about everything else. and they didn't just start now with the wind of the current movement they've been they've been doing it, it. yeah mm -hmm. yeah so we we stand ben and jerry's we love a non-dairy cherry garcia and we want to support <laughs> 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 so yeah and then, um so what about resources like where can people go to like find information to help them understand how to be like a better ally how to be a better ally. I mean, there are so many just like lists now floating around social media of like books and like, for instance, like No Names Book Club is, you know, a great resource. If you really want to get into like the radical root of things, mm -hmm. check out her book list, read those books. If, uh, you know, Netflix has a Black Lives Matter section in documentaries that you should be watching. I think a couple of weeks ago, they reported like there was a spike in people watching The Help. And it's like, no, this is not the time to watch The Help <laughs> or other like white savior movies that perpetuate mm -hmm. this kind of like, you know, person who comes in to save, a white person who comes in to save black people from the experience that they're having. This is not that time. This is the time mm -hmm. to listen to the words of black people and the experiences of black people in all the different shades and forms that we come in. You know, there's not just one black experience and they're all valid and we need to listen to them and learn from them. So, you know, whether it's that, whether it's reading, whether it's um, just on Instagram, you know, everyone's sharing these graphics and breaking down everything from 
what defunding and abolishing the police actually means to yes. uh, colorism within the black community and other communities of color to, um, you know, just everything under the sun. It's out there. And Google. Google is your friend. Mm -hmm. If you ever have a question, Google it and it will give you an answer and that will give you a place to start. So there's just so many resources that people can use. There's no excuse to not educate yourself further or to right. find the answers that you're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and, you know, I like, go ahead. Sorry, and I was going to say a little comment popped up about supporting locally Black-owned businesses. And especially oh, with, um, you know, Black-owned, uh, not libraries, but black owned bookstores, you know, like if we're mm -hmm. going to be reading these black books, buy them from the black bookstores. So there's, there's yeah. so many different ways to kind of do it. Um, but again, we are literally surrounded by information. I feel like I can't even keep up with all the, the things that I'm seeing every single day, but I'm trying my best mm -hmm. to like disseminate that stuff. So yeah, there's no excuse. Yeah. And especially when all that information is out there. And like you said, Google's your friend. So you know, one Google search and then you can find whatever you need. Exactly. Yeah. And then lastly, as like a creator, how do you stay inspired during these times? Mm. Well, I think in general, I've just been super inspired because, you know, my personal background, so I'm black and Guatemalan. I've mm -hmm. grown up in this identity forever. And so this yeah. is something that I've always talked about with other black friends, with other people of color. And I think now that we are given the visibility to kind of go in deeper, which is something that I've always personally been very passionate about, um, that in itself has been inspiring. Because I'm like, I'm ready. You know, I've, I've been talking about this stuff forever. This is what we've always needed to kind of have as far as um, the discussion goes. And yeah. now the world is finally waking up to it. And so that has been one of the most inspiring things because we're finally getting to the root of it. And we're finally mm -hmm. seeing black people in the light that we have been needing to see forever. So that's been really great. And it really fuels me to just keep going because it's important work. And although I take for granted the education that I have by being black and by doing my own research and reading and doing all that stuff, it's just like, mm -hmm. that is not inherently what everyone else has. So I'm willing to get over my uncomfortableness of yeah. public speaking of whatever it is um and talk about it to others so that they can start that journey for themselves yeah no that makes sense for sure especially when you speak about like you know the public speaking and things like that and understanding yeah you know in the position like, that you're in is we, definitely would we see like ourselves doing this like a few months ago eh, maybe but mm -hmm. you know what i mean now it's like this is the call to action for everybody not just for white people to wake up, not just for non-black people of color to wake up, but um, also just for, you know, our community to take the steps that we're being called to do as far yeah. as to do more. And I know I've been personally been called to do more and I've been answering that call. And it's just about, you know, looking at that for what it is and just walking in that and knowing that's what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Cool. I did see one question in the comments. Someone asked, you know, what books are you reading right now? So I thought that was a pretty good question to ask. Can you repeat that one more time? I didn't hear it. What books are you reading? What books am I reading? Mm -hmm. Actually, can I run and get my stack? Hold on. Yeah, yeah, do your thing. I, I have them on the table. I'll be right back. Yeah. Again, um, well, actually, way I want to thank everybody for tuning in. You know, uh, it's a lot of information that we're sharing, so yeah. Okay, so I have All About Love by Bell mm -hmm. Hooks, who is a famous black um, feminist author. And I've been personally just wanting to, have been wanting to dive more into feminist theory. Like I studied it a little bit in college, but I didn't go fully deep into it. So I'm going there. 
I also have Barracoon by Zora Neale Hurston. And mm -hmm. there we're going into more of the narrative. It's like the first account of um, a black slave that was actually recorded. So this is just super heart wrenching. I've read like a good part of it before, but it just goes into what he was experiencing and how she documented it. Yeah. And then I have James Baldwin, The Fire Next Time, which is just more so like a personal essay on um, his life around, I think it was written in the 60s, I want to say, and just diving into like the political climates then and how they mm. are still mirroring what's happening now. So like, I want to go there and see the parallels. So that's what I'm sitting on. But you know, there are so many, again, so many different opportunities to kind of educate yourself. And if you're not a huge reader, watch these great documentaries, you know, that are listed on all these different um, streaming services and mm -hmm. or just Google them because there are tough. Yeah. Google's easy. <laughs> Google is, is your friend. It is your friend. Yeah. But I do want to say, you know, I appreciate you mm -hmm. guys as a uh, voice in the like sneaker streetwear community as um, you know a brand that is a direct result of black culture actually taking the step to having these black conversations because yeah. you know there are still brands that are too afraid to take bigger stances and it's just like if you're afraid to take a stance at this point in time, when are you ever going to, you know, mm -hmm. actually get to the point where you can do it? And I think right. one of the things that has been just a little um, disparaging to see is that the performative side of things, it's like, this is a popular trend to talk about. You know, mm -hmm. it's safe to talk about Black Lives Matter. It's safe to say you support uh, the end of systemic racism. And so because of that, you just have to make sure that you are educating yourself and you are filtering what you're seeing and know the difference between being pandered to versus actually being included and seen in the conversation. Right. Yeah, well, so we appreciate you. those words as well. And, you know, thank you again for taking the time out to speak with Finish Line and educate not only Finish Line, but everybody else who's been tuning in as far as like allyship and the books you've been reading as well, along with, you know, just information I got. So thank you again. For sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. This was great. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course. So I will talk to you later. We're about to sign out. Um, everybody, every Friday, you'll see me doing this with another guest. So, you know, definitely tune in next week. And thank you. Thank you. No problem.